And welcome into To Your Health. You know, as you start to age, a lot of times things can happen. How many times have you visited with somebody and they say, yeah, just had a knee replacement or perhaps a shoulder replacement. Today here we have with us Dr. Lee Murphy with Houston Clinic. And Dr. Murphy, your mom and I are good friends. <laughs> and, and she did a good job with you. Oh, well, you're kind of say that. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Great folks. But as I was mentioning on the opening here, a lot of our viewers are people that are getting a little bit older, and sometimes this is it more or less an injury, or do, or do these parts of our bodies wear out? Well, we know that arthritis of hip, knee, shoulder is on the rise, and it's probably okay. multiple factors, one of which is we're getting older as a population mm -hmm. and being active older into older ages. And so the, the numbers are quite staggering in terms of the amount of joint replacements that are being done and that will need to be done, and the trajectory is, is a, pretty, a, a pretty steeply upward curve. So it's something that all of us are going to come in contact with, whether it's yourself or whether one of your family members. But having the, the, the chance of you having a knee that's arthritic, a hip that's arthritic, or shoulder that's arthritic is very high, actually. Mm -hmm. And basically what happens is years ago, it was pretty major, and you were really you were held down for quite some time. I'll tell you, it's really exciting to be you know, a patient in America in 2024, right? Because yeah, hip and knee replacement, shoulder replacement too, used to be an unbelievable ordeal. It involved being in the hospital for five to six days, you know, blood loss, blood transfusions. You know, mm. it was just a, it was a big operation to say, to say it bluntly. But as we've gotten better, we have medicines that decrease the blood loss during the surgery. We have medicines that allow you to have a regional anesthesia so that you don't need as much anesthetic. You, uh, our, our techniques have gotten better. Our speed has gotten better, therefore. And so, for instance, I did two total shoulders this morning. One of them took me 30 minutes, and the patient will eat lunch at their house. Wow. And so that's just a big step forward from where we were even in the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. um, and just being able to provide outpatient total joints, total joints that take only like four to six weeks to really get your feet back under you. Um, and the providers that provide these are, are doing it at a very high level. So it, it is really a blessing to preserve the mo mobility of uh, our population because mobility is super important. Mm -hmm. People don't think about it. They worry about their blood pressure, their heart disease, but realistically, you don't worry about your mobility until you don't have it. And I'm talking about whatever joint it is, but you know, preserving your mobility, I think as you age is arguably as important as many of these other large health markers that we track so closely. Mm -hmm. And you said a key thing also about the time under anesthesia. For an older person, the cutting that in half would be wonderful. That's a big worry a lot of my older patients have is, is can I stand up to anesthesia? And, and what I would say is, is with newer techniques, again, we use regional anesthesia. And I say we, I mean the anesthesia doctors, but mm -hmm. they can block the extremity so it's numb, numb for two days, three days sometimes, such that while you're asleep, you get very little inhaled anesthesia gases and it's much safer for you. And so it really, uh, some people who think, I, I th they think that they're not a candidate for anesthesia actually may be. And because of the, our ability to provide anesthesia in different ways, really just in the last 10 or 15 years. Mm -hmm. So basically when a person has one of these surgeries, recovery time is pretty quick then too also. You know, it's a big operation. I'm not trying to over uh, promise on that, but I would say that um, for a lot of people, I think they're too afraid, especially older folks, they're too afraid of the surgery and at the cost of, of being immobile, being mm -hmm. in the chair, not being able to see their grandkids. And so I do think it's a conversation that needs to be had with a healthcare provider um, like myself and just say, what, what do you think my realistic risks are mm -hmm. from the surgery? Because sometimes the, the benefits do outweigh the risk, uh, even if you have a few health conditions, because your mobility again is that important, you know? And so I think it's just a very individual um, decision for each person when it comes to these joint replacement um, mm -hmm. operations. And basically, as you're getting older, you're starting to feel like something's out of whack. At that point, can they come directly to you or do they have to go through their general practice doctor? Yes, sir. I mean, for the most part, uh, being able to come straight to me is usually pretty easy. I mean, we provide, I mean, most, most insurances are accepted by our clinic. Um, and when you're talking about Medicare and most of our modern healthcare products, you know, in terms of insurance, it's usually not a, a difficult thing to get in to see us. Um, sometimes you do need to be directed to the right provider. So a mm -hmm. lot of people, patients today can get frustrated. They said, I went here and I got told I really need to go there. And so um, one of the things I try to do is direct patients to the right 
subspecialist because in our world there's some people that that the, the only thing they do is hip replacement and knee replacement. Right. And I think those 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 guys do a great job. I, I tend to focus mostly on shoulder replacement within mm -hmm. my replacement practice. And frankly, there's not a lot of people that do that. So you know, being that subspecialized provides great advantages for the patient. So it is important to do your research a little bit about who to call about, you know, I have a hip problem and, and should I see this doctor or that doctor? But most doctors are very happy to see you and, and this is right down the middle for us in terms of what we do every day. And the key is if something's starting to bother you, get it treated early on. I really agree with that. As, as you age, um, you know, when you start developing, you start to wear out. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, being being um, when you don't trust your leg, meaning you you know it's going to hurt, right. so you don't want to take that step, and then you fall, and then you hurt something else. You can be on a spiral of, of mm -hmm. immobility that can really affect your overall happiness, your wellness, your ability to exercise, your ability to see your family. So I just think attending to the little aches and pains when it they come is probably, again, in America, is, is easy. Your insurance usually covers it. It might be as simple as a, a shot of steroid in the shoulder or a trip to the, to the PT for three mm -hmm. weeks. That's worth it to preserve your yeah, mobility. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and yes, thank sir. you so much for staying in Montgomery. Yes, sir. Because a lot of times people get that doctor and they're off to the bigger market. Yes, sir. And we need you here. I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. And we'll be right back right after this.